It is the summer of discontent in the Darjeeling Hills. In a throwback to the violence of the 80s, the heart-achingly beautiful region is on fire once again. The army has been sent in, along with the paramilitary and the state's own police force to try and restore order. Defying them are angry protesters, taking to the streets every day. Three protesters have died, one policeman has been stabbed, shops are closed, hotels shut, businesses stalled and ATMs are dry and all this during peak tourist season. Senior Gorkha Janmukti Mocha leaders have resigned from the Gorkha Land Territorial Administration or GTA. They say to fight for statehood for Nepali-speaking Gorkhas in Darjeeling. And the indefinite ban called by the GJM has entered its 11th day. This latest flare-up has been ignited ostensibly by the decision of the West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee's government to introduce Bengali as a compulsory language across all schools in the state. On We the People, we're asking today, is the state and the centre playing with fire by ignoring the Gorkha identity issue? Joining us on the show today, we have from the TMC, the General Secretary of the West Bengal Trinamul Congress and its spokesperson, Mawa Moitra. We have Roshan Giri, he's the General Secretary of the GJM and its second in command. He's not only the face of the party in regions away from the hills, but also the main channel of communication between the GJM and the BJP. From the BJP, we have Joy Prakash Mujumdar. He's a vice president of the West Bengal State Unit. We have Dr. Chandan Mitra, senior journalist, analyst, and former BJP MP in the Rajya Sabha. Prashant Tamang, Indian Idol winner, one of the rallying voices of the Gorkha Land protests. Professor Neera Chandhoke, National Fellow of the Indian Council of Social Science and Research, and M.K. Raghavendra, film historian, critic, and political commentator on national versus regional identity issues. And last but not the least, Raja Banerjee, the tea king of India, the tea estate owner who manages the world's oldest tea company today. So let's start though first with the TMC. Ma, I want to go across to you. The spark for this latest agitation was your government's decision to declare that Bengali should be made compulsory in schools across the state. Yes, I know you've issued a clarification since, but the damage clearly has been done. And not just have you reignited this demand for a separate statehood, more importantly for you, you have the center now stepping in. A huge self-goal? Not at all. I think uh, this actually, if you, if you look at the timing of this, on the 15th of May, the, there was an announcement by the education minister about Bengali being made compulsory in um, across the state now of course it would have been better had we said up front that this doesn't include the regions in the hill but be that as it may on the 30th of may the hill party the gjm put out something saying that we're going to go into an agitation to withdraw this on the 5th the chief minister on the 5th of june the chief minister herself went to the hills she had a meeting in mirik in which she made a which was a public meeting where she announced unambiguously with absolute clarity that this does not apply to the regions of darjeeling kalimpong karsiong and the north and there is no question of bengali being made compulsory there it will be optional as it has always been even if we were to accept that there was a lack of clarity up front. On the 5th, when the Chief Minister herself made the announcement, the Gorkha uh, Janmurti Mocha on the 6th of June said they would go into a complete um, uh, you know, uh, confrontation on this issue. Now, I think when you see when some when this announcement was made and the chief minister clarified it, there is absolutely no sense in taking this issue up. It just didn't hold. And I think the main thing that had happened was just two weeks prior to that were the municipal elections in the hills. And for the first time, if you see in their strongholds, a party from the plains, the Trinamool, in Mirik, we won six out of nine seats. In Darjeeling, we won 26% of the vote. In Karshiang, we won 34% of the vote. And in Kalimpong, the Trinamool won 14% and the Janandolan party won 34%. So right. combined, obviously, the Gorkha, if, if the TMC had not done development and if we didn't have a leg to stand on in the hills, I don't think the people would have voted for us two weeks before. All right, Mr. Giri, you were fine GTA until things were going well. That's what the TMC says. Then they won in uh, the Mirik local municipal elections. And perhaps if you had had the GTA elections, they would have probably also done well then. Is that what this is really about? No, no, no. You see... It is not because of the municipality election. It is the people's demand, the Gorkha land, people's aspiration. But why now then? No, you see, while signing the memorandum of agreement, we never dropped the demand for a separate state of Gorkha land. It's clearly written that the government of India, the government of West Bengal and Gorkha Janmukti Morcha, keeping on record the demand of Gorkha land, agree as follows. So government of India is also responsible. Government of West Bengal is also responsible. 
But mm. now, uh, dealing with the situation in this heavy-handed manner, right? You had the police do a raid on Mr. Gurung, the chief, Morsha's chief's home come residence. Hasn't that also just exacerbated the situation? We've asked them why now. For the past 10 years, it's been a peaceful, largely Gandhian movement. And you, your government has been in power for six of those 10 years. So why now suddenly are we seeing this violence? Well, that is the German question. I think why now? It's, a, it's sort of a concatenation of two, two reasons that have come to a head. One is that the GTA, when we talk about resigning from the GG, GTA, these are, this is just pure histrionics because if you have to remember, the term of the GTA is due to expire on the 2nd of August. So, so to resign from the GTA on the 20, uh, uh, sort of you know on the 24th of uh, June doesn't seem to you've been in power they've held on to it for five years so if they had to resign why didn't they do it earlier if they felt it was working why not why no, no, resign you now see, why we not were never elections? interested with GTA no but you won 45 G percent right the last time this time around maybe you would win more no you no you see you see we, we 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 are we are not going for GTA elections we never wanted to go we accepted this as an interim arrangement the government of West Bengal never allowed it to function and now we have thrown GTA now. We will go ahead with the Gorkhaland movement. It's people's aspiration. The government of India has to concede to the demand of Gorkhaland. The government of India has to concede to the demand of Gorkhaland. Yeah. Let's go across to Mr. Majumdar. He's uh, uh, from the BJP. Mr. Majumdar, what exactly is your government's stand on this issue? Your two MPs from this region have won because of the support of the GJM. What is your stand? Please clarify that first. Thank you. I first want to refer to the first, first speaker about that language problem, recent, the triggering incident. She should refer to the annexure one of the GTA agreement, number five, where it is clearly written that school education, including primary education, secondary education, will be transferred to GTA. Then if the school education is transferred to GTA, then why the Partho Chatterjee, the education minister has first of all announced about the Bengali imposition. Why this attempt to subverse the whole thing that they did not transfer power to the GTA during last five years. That is the main problem that state government signed GTA in 2011 in the presence of Mamta Banerjee and Mr. Chidambaram. But later on, Mamta Banerjee did not transfer the autonomy to the GTA that is clear and it's factual. All right. So and what, that all is right, the all right, Mr. Majumdar, we believe. Thank you. That's and a very Mamta, important point. Mamta we will Banerjee put that across to Mamta. Always it was one of the 59 parts the of the administration, Mr. Power. Majumdar. Otherwise, that what to be handed over by the GTA. That is clear, be, yes. But what is not clear is what is your government stand on the issue of a separate state of Gorkhaland? What no, is the party stand? Our, our stand, if you know, we never, in our manifesto, we said that compassionately we will consider the demands and the mang of Gorkha people. We have never mentioned creation of a separate state. And we still believe that only four assembly constituencies cannot be the basis of a separate state. But the question is, when one after another autonomous body was created, first CPM did not allow it to function, that Darjeeling Gorkha Hill Council, then Mamta Banerjee did not allow All the right. GTA Chantan Mitra, to let's function. go across to you. He says it was part of the manifesto, but it wasn't part of the original manifesto. It was added on much later. But the BJP really in a catch-22 situation. When it made these promises of a separate state, the idea of being in power at some point in West Bengal was nowhere on the distant horizon. Now, of course, things have changed. And now it can no longer run with the hare and hunt with the hounds. No, no, I think our position has been very clear right from the start. What is it? BJP has been in favor of smaller states. It is Mr. Vajpayee, you must remember, who created three new states, Uttarakhand, uh, <coughs> Jharkhand, and Chhattisgarh. And thereafter, the government has been very clear that yes, we are sympathetic to ideas of smaller states, provided there is some cohesive, I would say, compelling reasons for that creation. Is there a cohesive and compelling reason you for see, the creation of as Mr. Majumdar rightly pointed state? out, basically the point is that it is too small and unviable and will always be a burden on the center. Besides, there is no compelling reason 
because the hills and the plains in Bengal have always lived in harmony, the economy of the hills, tea gardens and uh, tourism, these are both kind of uh, either uh, run by Bengalis or you know, kind of the economic motivation comes from Bengali tourists. Given all this reality, there is no compelling reason, as I say, for the creation of a state, except there is a linguistic difference. We all agree. You see, the Gorkhas uh, speak Nepali as a mother tongue, Bengalis speak Bengali. Now, that is not good enough reason for a small state to be carved out. Mr. Giri, this is your ally since 2007. This is the party with both your MP now, they, from, from they, Darjeeling, they, they is from the BJP. Look at a larger perspective of, of West Bengal, the vote bank. That's right, because they don't but want to lose you on see, the Bengali votes but in the no, mainland. We, no, no, we but look at the All see, India perspective. No, but we you look see, at Gorkha, India land, perspective. Gorkha land, it is very, very different from the rest of West Bengal. Our tradition, our culture, our heritage, our language, the geographical condition, it does not suit with the rest of West Bengal. So we are very different, and it is within the framework of Indian constitution. What is the harm? So I agree, I'm glad you brought up the constitution because the constitution says that it's got nothing to do with the West Bengal government. It's the center that has the sole yeah, power yeah. and the decision making when it comes to creating a new state. That is Your why we are... is in the center. They have a majority in the Lok Sabha. Your <coughs> MP from Darjeeling is from the BJP. Yet yeah. this is what they're saying. So where do you stand? <coughs> no, you <coughs> see, we are asking the center to intervene, open a dialogue on Gorkha land. We will not buzz an inch from the demand of Gorkha land now. In their manifesto of 2009 and 14, they have stated that they will sympathetically examine the long pending demand of the Gorkhas, sympathy. Adivasis of Darjeeling district and doers region and will sympathetically consider it. Okay. So they are at the government now. They should right. do so something. You're, you you know, seem to, to be happy clarify. with sympathy. You see BJP's I mean, st statement refers to sympathetically considering their demands for autonomy. And autonomy has been given. Long pending demand is not the autonomy. Demand. The concept of autonomy has failed. No, that is another it matter. It has failed now. That is another matter. It for has which failed. The BJP is not responsible. No, but if the concept the, of the long pending demand is not the autonomy. autonomy. It is the statehood. Can we not run statehood. A whole state if, if you say the concept of autonomy has failed. The, the autonomous council, the concept autonomy, of autonomy, autonomy has failed now. If they've not been able to function, can we actually go ahead and make a full state? Why not? But if if the, the government of India so desired. Experiments haven't worked. No, government of India, they should come with a concrete decision on the statehood demand now. Okay, I want to bring in Prashant Samang. He, as I'm sure all of you know, is the winner of Indian Idol 3. And from the days of when they were canvassing for you, when uh, this became a political issue, and you've come a long way. You have several films under your belt. You're now an actor in the Nepali film industry. You have two albums under your belt, but you still believe in the rebellion? Are you happy with sympathy? Does that satisfy you? No, 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 no. Uh, the first thing is, I am here today uh, on behalf of uh, the people in the hills. So I am not here as a celebrity or s uh, someone else. So I am just uh, worried about the situation happening there in my place. And my brothers, my sisters are dying. Internets are shut down. Everything is closed. This is, this is very unfortunate. No, so are you saying you should end the demand for a separate no, no, state? No, no, no. Now it's a people's movement now. But no. the BJP is saying that they, they sympathise with you, but they do not think, Mr. Mitra I, says I, over I, here, I, he does not think it is a viable option to have a separate state. Frankly speaking, I have no idea about the politics. I'm here for the people. And uh, I just know that we want Gorkha land. That's All right. It. Okay. All right, Prashant. So I can understand there is a dream. The people of uh, want a separate state, they want a separate homeland. But can you explain to me how how will solving or having a separate state prevent incidents like what happened with you when you had the RJ call you a security guard? A exactly, guard, right? exactly. That's what that's what. Uh, when I won the idol and uh, the RJ here in Delhi, he called me like he said he made a statement that uh, every uh, darwan, if every single uh, every darwan who becomes the idol, who will guide, uh, who will guard us. That hurts. Of course, Prashant, there yeah. are, but my question is this. How does having a separate state solve that problem? Will it end? We, there are people who are ignorant. They are bigots. They will continue to say you're a chinky or you're a Nepali or you're a Chokidar. How will having a separate state solve that? First of all, people have to uh, think in their mind uh, the kind of word they use uh, to us. Mm. Not only us. Mm. All the uh, 
not is uh, sure absolutely people. that is a problem and we can have a whole yeah. entire debate about so, that so yeah so the thing is now uh, i don't know about like i said i don't know about the politics but uh, i just want government uh, to take a very strong action and uh, go further with the demand okay and prashant you were part of the kolkata police force yeah. right and you were part of their orchestra and uh, from what i've heard your first encouragement your colleagues in the police encouraged you yeah, to yeah. go and audition for the indian idol right contest so when you heard about that policeman who was stabbed what did that make you feel because these are by by people like you you're saying who want a separate state it's not only the policeman who got stabbed but it's the policeman who killed who fired the gun i didn't see in my life in the police someone firing when the protest is going on i haven't seen that i have seen la uh, lati charge i have done that but i haven't seen a police firing uh, a gun so that's very uh, th that's very sad sad to know then neera let's go across to you as you can hear there there's a heady mix of emotion and reason when it comes to demanding a separate state but is it even feasible in this case is it feasible you know if we step back from political polemics that have overtaken these demand for independent states it is time that we set up a second state reorganization commission and work out which principles should be employed to construct a state because this kind of legitimization of a separate state is politically very dangerous it is chauvinistic it is inward looking and what is the connection between a, an ethnic group and a state of one zone there is no homogeneous ethnic group you're divided on the basis of class you're divided on the basis of gender and you know india is a plural society we must learn to get along with people who are not like us i do not see this kind of ideology as being legitimate for a state of one zone having said that i also think it's time that the tmc tones down its bengali chauvinism mm. i mean frankly it is disastrous it's dangerous we have seen in india's neighborhood what identity politics have done when it comes to creating states so learn from history do not replicate history people who replicate history are bound to be doomed Mawa, is this is your government basically using the issue of bengali identity to counter what the bjp is doing with hindu nationalism and just as it suits the bjp to have kashmir boiling politically it suits you to have darjeeling boiling like this uh don't at all i think it's very unfortunate that a person from an academic background who's you know not here on a political uh, wicket says something like tmc tones down its uh, bengali chauvinism i don't think this is anything to do with bengali chauvinism i think the tmc and the bengal government has shown to the rest of india the reason we are not in favor our mandate is not the division of bengal and there is no way unlike the bjp which for the first time today i'm i'm at least happy that the bjp has come out and said that we are not in favor of a separate state because all that we've heard over the last six or seven years has been they've been sitting on the fence and they've just been wishy washy that we're sympathetic what is sympathy either you're for or you're against you know we've come out and said we will not allow bengal to be divided and that's the end of that and that has nothing to do with chauvinism it is to do with keeping the pluralistic identity of bengal intact it is the exact opposite of chauvinism if we were chauvinistic we'd be only too happy to say all right you're not like us you don't speak our language you eat differently please make your own state let us bengalis be together it's the exact opposite of chauvinism so i'd really like to place that on record but what about development then if they are part of the same say they part of the same people the, as the gjm points out that they just haven't kept pace with with the, the development we've only been in power for 6 years and uh, you know our chief minister the why the, the trouble started why the, the chief minister was having a cabinet meeting for the first time since the 1970s we were having a cabinet meeting in the raj bhavan in bengal in north bengal in darjeeling because she said that it is high time that we take the cabinet there twice a year we formed a secretariat in north bengal i think no other government has done enough to bring about parity between north and south bengal as this government has so when it comes to development like i just said we had an average of 30% of the vote share in the recent municipal elections if we hadn't done any development then i don't think the people would have voted for us with the mandate that they did the gta says that decisions are still being made at the writers building that's i i don't think that it's unfortunate that they feel that but like i said that the timing of this is extremely suspect they have been part and parcel of this journey for the past 5 years and one month before the mandate on the back of uh, uh, you know not as good as expected results for their own elections when they come out and say the gta hasn't functioned i'm sorry that's is a bit suspect